If I asked you to name a type of Japanese noodles, I bet you say ramen. Am I right? Of course, it's the most popular answer. Ramen's great, it's cheap, it's accessible, it's tasty. But it's also very high in calories because of all the oil content and it's high in salt. There's another noodle that unfortunately doesn't have as much press and is taking the back seat and that's buckwheat noodles, also called sobo noodles. Well today, we're gonna learn more about this underrated noodle and we're gonna take this much more healthier, lighter and refreshing noodle back to its glory. Stay with me. This is Biting Into Life where being healthy is all about pure joy, pleasure and awesomeness. Sobo noodles are a year-round comfort food, but before I start getting into the yumminess of sobo noodles, let me hit you with some health benefits. Sobo noodles are excellent for mental and digestive health, and they're believed by many around the world to have health properties as they're high in protein and contain various types of amino acids such as lysine and arginine. Okay, what's that? Well, what you need to know is that these are essential building blocks for child development, growth, and stamina. Stamina, this is it. If you're looking for energy, forget about traditional pasta. I mean, traditional pasta will give you some energy, but they lack the key nutrients because they're heavily refined. So choose buckwheat noodles as a better alternative. Sobo noodles can be served hot or cold, but you'll mostly find them served cool with just a dipping sauce, and that's about it. Soba doesn't hide under a blanket of tomato sauce because when they're prepared freshly and properly, naked sobo noodles will put the subtle, nutty flavors on display. In Japan, eating soba is part of the custom of various annual events. Soba, buckwheat, usually means the noodle soba kiri. Long ago, soba was cooked as porridge, but once milling technology made its way to Japan, it was replaced by soba gaki, a dough of soba flour and water heated and netted, and soba dango, balls of cooked soba kaki. Soba kiri, which is soba flour netted with flour, rolled out and cut into noodles, appeared sometime in the mid-Edo period, around 1603 to 1867. Many restaurants add a little bit of wheat flour when preparing their soba noodles as 100% buckwheat tends to be a, a little bit brittle. If you're gluten sensitive, you might find that the 80% buckwheat flour to the 20% wheat flour ratio to be surprisingly tolerable. The color of noodles may be white or dark depending on the restaurant. The difference is due to the type of soba flour used. The white soba noodles are made by grinding the middle of the buckwheat, while the darker noodles are made by grinding both the inner part and the outer layer. White soba noodles are characterized by their sweet flavor. The whitest flour is made by grinding just the middle of the soba seeds. The dark flour made by grinding the entire seed is characterized by a strong aroma. Soba noodles made with the dark flour are called inaka soba. Aroma is very important when preparing soba noodles and to have a good aroma, the buckwheat flour needs to be very fresh. So we're gonna make homemade fresh noodles. We're gonna roll and create cohesive fresh noodles by hand. Psych! Rolling by hand is an art form that takes years and years of practice. We're not gonna do that. These days, dried soba noodles have replaced homemade soba noodles in most Japanese kitchens, so we'll do the same. Now, I wanna give some oomph to my buckwheat noodles 
And so I'm gonna be stir frying some vegetables and pouring them over my buckwheat noodles. Now, the buckwheat noodles will have to be cooked floating in ample boiling water so that it's sticky and it doesn't become a problem if they're improperly cooked. So for this, I'm gonna need a wok and plenty of water and a pasta pot, which I don't have, so let's go to the store. Back in my kitchen, I'm so happy that I have all the cookware that I need. I have my wok, I have my pasta pot, I have all this equipment that I'm just gonna add on top of all the other stuff that I already own. But anyway, they're really good quality and I'm really happy I got them. Now, we're gonna start putting our hands into the dish, but before we do, I have to warn you. In order to make this dish a success, it's gonna need your complete and undivided attention. What I mean by this is no multitasking. If you read the package of buckwheat noodles, you may read that it takes about around five minutes to cook. And we're gonna stick around the four to five minutes just to make sure that it's perfectly al dente because if it's not, then you're gonna end up with a mushy mess, which you don't want. So we're gonna stay into the kitchen. You can be like, doo -doo -doo. I don't know, like you can be on your phone or whatever, but make sure that you keep your eyes on the noodles, okay? All right, so let's go.